After having Denise explaining what the project is all about and uh, providing theoretical background, I'm going to focus a little more on the phases of the project, the participants, and also I'm going to show some examples of videos produced by our students. So the project was divided into uh, phases that we followed Willis to name as pre-task, in which students had all the planning phase, the task itself, which consisted in the production of the videos, and the post-task post-task in which we had the presentations, the video exchange, discussions and feedback. I'm going to detail each one of them in the following slide. For the participants, we had 15 students of Portuguese who were undergrad students in their second semester. They studied at the University at Albany, SUNY. In Brazil, we had 35 students of English as a foreign language, mostly were beginners and low intermediate level students, and they always studied at the Federal Institute of Santa Catarina in Araranguá, in the south of Brazil. So the students in the USA, they decided to do their Portuguese as a foreign language as an elective course. And the students in Brazil, they are enrolled in this course as a mandatory one. So following the phases that we had to develop this task, uh, the first one was the brainstorming, the planning, and it was the one in which students wrote the script and they also rehearsed. Then they filmed and edited the video, and finally we had the video presentation. So in the pre-task phase, we showed the students, we presented to the students the objectives of the project, and we brainstormed ideas together. For the Portuguese, for the Brazilian students who are studying Portuguese, in Brazil, they read excerpts of blog posts in which people who have had experience in the United States and in Brazil report what they found out about um, interesting cultural aspects that are different from one country to another. So students read these excerpts to help them brainstorm ideas. Also, students could contribute according to their experiences and people they know to identify possible differences from one culture to another. We also discussed about the equipment and the resources needed. Uh, we formed the groups. The students signed a rubric which allowed us to use their images. And also, we discussed all the steps they were going to go through, especially the deadlines. And the most important part was developed in the pre-task phase as well, which is the script. Each student decided what they were going to talk about in the video, and they rehearsed pronunciation of some words which were more challenging for them. The students were free to choose their topics, to create, use their imagination, and also they could, uh, for example, repeat topics because the way we saw that it was that even if they repeated topics, they would uh, present it in a different way according to their singular and unique uh, perspectives. After we had the video phase in which students filmed or edited the video, students could choose if they wanted to show themselves on the screen or if they preferred to show images instead. They were also encouraged to use um, sound effects, image effects, 
to attract their audience to the topic they were talking about. Uh, students could use computer labs in their institutions or they could use their own. They decided uh, what to do since the project was very free and they were autonomous to decide how to proceed in accordance to their specific objectives in this project. The post task was the most beautiful one because this was the one in which we had the videos presentation and also we had videos exchanged among students. So students from uh, the USA could watch uh, the Brazilian students' videos and the other way around also work it that way. So we had the presentations, the videos were showed in class, also we had discussions and reflections about the content selected and the way the content was showed and um, also and most importantly, the views of uh, cultural aspects, how they were received by the students, if they agreed or not, if they were talking about uh, most people or just some specific examples in their own culture. Also, the students exchanged feedback. The videos were provided on a link using the website SurveyMonkey in which students had a chance to watch the videos again and evaluate them. We also provided a box for comments so they could add questions, specific comments that they had after watching each video. And finally, we had a survey about the project as a whole in which they provided their own perceptions regarding the type of project that we developed, the topic selected, um, how they performed in the task, if they would like to do this task again. So the feedback exchange between the students and teachers and also the survey about the project uh, uh, provided data that will come out hopefully in an article. The data will be analyzed and then we are going to try to find um, relevant results that may lead us to develop a better project in the future. So uh, what is important to emphasize in this post-task phase is the meaningful assessment or, or the alternative assessment that we had according to Brown. So this type of a project does not only allow us to evaluate a student's performance itself, but, but it also uh, fosters discussion in class, reflections about all the processes being developed. Also, students give and receive feedback, not only from the teacher, but from their peers in the different country. And students also had a chance to evaluate the project as a whole and to evaluate themselves as a self-evaluation. So this is a holistic uh, type of assessment which is more reinforced uh, in the types, in the educational context that we have nowadays. So here we have an example of what the student's feedback form looked like. This was in the website SurveyMonkey. Students could play the video for a second or third time because they had already watched the video in class. But here they had the moment to watch it again and then evaluate uh, the video production of their peers according to topics such as 
if the cultural aspect selected was appropriate, if the organization was good, um, if fluency was okay to understand what was being said, the non-verbal skills, and so on and so forth. And then they had a box for comment in the end in which they could add questions and extra observations about their perceptions for each one of the videos produced. So all the videos produced uh, can be accessed in a Facebook web page called Intercultural Language Learning. For this presentation, we're going to show some seconds of two video productions, one by Brazilian students and the other by American students. But don't forget that you can watch and comment and like all the videos on this link provided here or just by looking for the Intercultural Language Learning Facebook web page online. So I'll leave you to the examples. I hope you enjoy it and we are looking forward to answer your questions. Pizza in Brazil is eaten with knife and fork. This habit is very rude in the USA because they use hands to eat. We also put mayonnaise and mustard in our pizza. And here we have many flavors of sweetie pizza, as ice cream pizza, chocolate pizza, banana and cinnamon pizza, and many others. Thank you for watching our presentation. We hope you like it and uh, we are we would like to say that we're very grateful to all people involved, especially the students who allowed us to use their videos for research purposes. And also, we are very thankful for being part of this online event in which we can share our experiences and improve our objectives after receiving your suggestions and questions. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.